What's good? We back. Another video live from the patio. You know, my mama's crib, my power went out in the neighborhood and shit on the, one of the hottest fucking days, but we gonna rock out, still do our thing. Um, you know, everybody's talking about the Mayweather McGregor thing becoming official. Um, I'm gonna change speeds, switch it up. I'll talk about that shit later, uh, some other time. I let every, I know I'm talking, y'all seeing a whole bunch of that shit on y'all YouTube and all your social media feed, man. It's just oversaturation right now. Uh, I slide in through the back door a little bit later and get my two cents on there. But um, talk about the return of Devin Alexander. Um, I know a lot of people, um, you know, some people were big on Devin Alexander at Junior Welterweight, and he had that fight with Tim Bradley. We, we briefly talked about yesterday on his uh, Tim Bradley, a Hall of Famer video. Um, but, you know, that was his only real hookup in his, you know, Coming up, you know, almost to, I guess you would consider that his prime now. Um, he was one of the top guys at 140, you know, at Junior Welterweight. He called out Amir Khan and everybody, you know, nobody really wanted to fight him or Tim Bradley. So pretty much they got it on for, you know, the king of the Junior Welterweight division, which was like super stacked um, back then, you know, with Victor Ortiz, Marcos Madonna was just made it in, Cattell, Nick Lucas Matisse was still um, an up and comer, but he was still was a big puncher. Um, Bradley, Amir Khan, Lamont Peterson. Danny Garcia was in the mix, coming up in the mix. Kendall Holt, you know, who's who's list, you know what I mean? But, um, you know, he got a hiccup with, uh, you know, he got a hiccup with uh, Amir Khan. A few hiccups that he that he did have, you know. Um, Sean Porter was the beginning of it. You know, him holding out, waiting for Kell Brook for over a year. That didn't happen. He took Sean Porter fight, and, and it didn't go well. Well, if you didn't know, um, you know, Kevin Cunningham, and Devin Alexander, they moved their whole training camp from St. Louis all the way to West Palm Beach, Florida, which Kevin Cunningham in a boxing scene article that I will leave in the description said that um, it was a uh, it was a big move for them. You know, for many reasons, they moved out of St. Louis because it was too much snow in the winter and too hot in the summer. He wanted to a, a, a get a gym in a place where everybody would like to come and he can attract more world-class fighters to his gym in a better location or a better location in West Palm, West Palm Beach, Florida, or Florida in general. And uh, that's the reason they moved their camp down there, to get away from the street life and all that other stuff that's, that distracts fighters. He wants fighters to be able to be focused, be comfortable in his gym, and they're ready to get the ball rolling. You know, his brother Vaughn just got out of jail. He did a bid. He's trying to compete at middleweight. Um, he was a, a hot shot amateur as well. But, you know, what was Hank, what reason we won with Devin Alexander, according to Kevin Cunningham in his boxing scene article, was the the fact that he got an addiction to painkillers, um, you know, he beat that, he beat the shit out of Marcus Madonna to me. A lot of people was crying because he was holding, but he beat Madonna the most impressively that I have seen done in my opinion, and the most cleanly I seen done. However you want to feel about holding, who gives a shit? He he beat him the best in my opinion. But um, he said, he said going into that fight that that Devin had a broken nose, thought he had a broken nose, but they cho they chose to go in the fight. He still beat Madonna. He got checked out after the fight. He had a, a, a blood clot in his nose that he had to get removed and some cartilage. And, you know, he had never had a surgery in his life. Talking about Devin Alexander. This is Kevin Cunningham talking about the story. Said they uh, gave him painkillers. And pretty much from there, he got strung out on painkillers. He got addicted to painkillers. And we heard about Brett Farr and a host of other athletes getting addicted to painkillers, especially in the NFL. And he said he got addicted. He said it affected his performance versus, I guess, Sean Porter. He said anything after the Marcus Madonna fight, it affected his performance. Sean Porter... Amir Khan fight. He said he wasn't explosive. He wasn't the same fighter. And you could tell he wasn't. You know, I was just thinking it was to move up and wait. But uh, obviously, you know, this painkiller shit was real bad. And, you know, with the Aaron Martinez fight coming, um, he begged Devin to pull out that fight because he didn't know that, that he had an addiction. And he said, man, don't come back to my gym until you find out what's wrong with you. You know, Al Heyman sent him to the Mayo, the Mayo, the Mayo Clinic in Vegas. They couldn't find nothing wrong with him. And, um, you know, finally he came out clean to Kevin Cunningham and told him that he had an addiction, and they figured out what's wrong. You know, after the Aaron Martinez fight, I think he said they figured out he had an addiction. And, you know, before that, he told Devin that he didn't want to see him back in the ring until he found out what, ha what happened with him. But Devin played play with him before the Aaron Martinez lost that. He wanted to make the fight. He could have been better. He said he just didn't have it. He could tell he didn't have the stamina. He didn't have a, the punching, the pun I mean, the punching, the punching, punching power, punching resistance. He just wasn't the same fighter. He said he just wasn't the same fighter, and now he's back on the right track. He went to rehab. He's clean. It's the rebirth for him, stepping back in the boxing world. And um, and if he's clean, he's only 30, just turned 30. Uh, still got some prime left. Um, 
and hopefully he can make some noise at 147 pounds. You know, um, I was a big Devin uh, Alexander promoter, even after the Tim Bradley fought that was in the Pontiac Silverdome. Um, you know, HBO. That's the immediately after that fight, HBO stopped throwing money into promoting fights. That was a fight that I really can identify that really failed, and HBO really, you know, strung back, you know, promoting, putting money into marketing and promoting. But you know, I'm happy that he's back, and hopefully he can be successful. Uh, we gone.